This is the first part of the lectures covering Newton's third law. Newton's third law is the last of the fundamental relationships that describe motion throughout the entire universe. Newton's third law essentially describes how different objects interact with one another. Newton's third law is usually summarized in a cliche, a quotation that everybody knows. However, let's make sure that we understand that quotation. The quotation is as follows. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate this quotation to you two different ways. In my first demonstration, I'm going to do this somewhat difficultly. Okay, what I have here, for example, is a length of string that is tied to the side of my desk. And then right here is a straw. The string is threaded through it. And then I have right here a balloon. I'm going to go ahead and blow up the balloon. Like so. And I'm going to use some tape here. I'm going to go ahead and tape the balloon to the straw. Here and here. Like so. Let's reinforce that a little bit. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull the string taut like so. And then I'm just going to release the balloon. And then lo and behold, the following happens. Like so. This is somewhat cleverly referred to as a balloon rocket. Okay, so we have this simple demonstration. A balloon rocket. Okay, let's kind of draw out and break down how the demonstration works. Okay, so first of all, we've got this string, like so. Here's the straw, like this. Okay, and then here's the balloon. Like so, my rather crude drawing of the balloon. Like so. Okay, and then as you saw, I released the balloon, and the balloon accelerated in this direction. So the balloon accelerates. Okay, now, if the balloon accelerates according to Newton's first law, what must be present? A net force. According to Newton's second law, in which direction does the net force act? In the same direction as the acceleration. In other words, there is a net force exerted upon the balloon. The question is, however, is what is exactly pushing the balloon to the right-hand side? Okay, now to clarify, it wasn't me. All that I did was I just let go of the balloon and then the balloon accelerated. So the question is, is what actually pushes the balloon? Now to answer that question, there is something about the balloon itself that we need to know. The balloon is an example of what is called an elastic object. An elastic object is something that springs back to its equilibrium position after it's been disturbed in some manner. So if you take a balloon, for example, and stretch it out like so, it returns to its equilibrium position. If you take, for example, a rubber band, like so, stretch it out, it returns to its equilibrium position. All materials are elastic to some degree, even seemingly very rigid objects, such as, for example, the board. The board is elastic to some degree because I can disturb it like so from its equilibrium position, and then it returns to its equilibrium position. So the balloon is elastic. Okay, what that essentially means is that after I release the balloon and it returns to its equilibrium position, the walls of the balloon here collapse, like so. So the walls collapse because the balloon is elastic. Okay, so what do the collapsing walls do to the air inside the balloon? 
the collapsing walls push the air of the balloon outside of the balloon. So in other words, right here like so, there is a force on the air inside the balloon due to the balloon. It's important to realize that the force that's being exerted here is upon the air inside of the balloon, not outside of the balloon. In the quotation, this is the action. So the question then, therefore, is what is the reaction? Well, if the walls of the balloon push on the air as the action, then the reaction, very simply, is that the air pushes back on the balloon in the opposite direction. That's the reaction in the quotation. Okay, once again, it's important to realize that this force that's being exerted here is being exerted on the walls of the balloon due to the air inside of the balloon. That's, once again, the reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, this is a little bit difficult to picture, admittedly, because after all, you can't see the air molecules inside the balloon because they're far too small. So let me illustrate to you, once again, Newton's third law with another demonstration, but this one is much simpler to visualize. And that is, for example, these two carts. These two carts here, each cart has an elastic band, like so that it is attached. As you can see, the elastic bands compress. And then what I'm going to do, let me move this out of the way, is I'm going to take my two carts here, compress them together like so, and then I'm just going to release them like so, and they spring apart from one another. Okay, now the carts that I'm using here in this demonstration have an equal mass, and as you can see, as they spring apart, they have about the same amount of acceleration as well. Okay, now, let's assume for simplicity that the table is horizontal and frictionless. This then means that the only force that matters in this demonstration is the force that occurs between the two carts due to the elastic bands. Let's call this right here cart number one, and this right here cart number two. So now here's this demonstration involving these carts. Okay, so here's cart one, and here's cart two. Okay, now while the bands are springing back to their equilibrium position, while the carts are still in contact with one another, they are exerting forces on one another. So for example, there is right here a force on two due to one. Think of this as the action. Therefore, the equal and opposite reaction is that right here, there is a force on one due to two. This right here is the reaction. In other words, when one object interacts with another by exerting a force, then the other object exerts the same amount of force just in the opposite direction. That's the illustration here of Newton's third law. Okay, now it's not quite as obvious, however, as to why the two forces have to be equal to each other in magnitude. I'm illustrating that here with the two carts having about the same mass. Let's assume that they do. If they do have the same mass, this then means that they have the same acceleration as they're springing apart from one another. Think of this right here, for example, as the only force that is being exerted upon cart number two. If that's the case, from Newton's second law, this is equal to the net force exerted on cart number two, which is its mass multiplied by its acceleration. Right over here, let's assume that this is the only force being exerted on cart number one. Therefore, from Newton's second law, this right here is equal to the net force because exerted upon cart number one. This is equal to the mass of one multiplied by its acceleration, set the two equal to each other. When we do, if the masses are equal to each other, as they approximately are in the demonstration, then the accelerations are equal to each other, as they approximately are in the demonstration. Okay, last thing about this demonstration before I conclude this lecture, before I include rather this portion of the lecture. 
If you examine what I've drawn here on the board with these simple force diagrams and compare them to what I drew earlier for the force diagrams illustrating Newton's second law with the air track demonstration, it looks like I'm contradicting myself. In the air track demonstration, for example, we had the tension vector to the right-hand side and we had the force of friction acting to the left-hand side canceling, canceling out the tension vector. And then therefore, when the air was off, the cart didn't accelerate. Why don't these two forces cancel each other out? After all, they're equal to each other in magnitude and in opposite directions. The answer to that question is that these two forces are acting on different objects. Whereas in the second law demonstration, the two forces were being exerted upon the same object. As I said in the course of this lecture a few minutes ago, if this right here is the only force being exerted upon number two, then it's equal to the net force exerted on number two. If this right here is the only force being exerted on number one, then it's equal to the net force being exerted upon number one. The forces don't cancel each other because they're acting on different objects. So to summarize these demonstrations, once again, essentially Newton's third law basically describes how objects interact with one another. In the second portion of this lecture on Newton's third law, I'll take you, to, take you through, once again, some simple conceptual examples involving motion that the ancient Greeks would not have been able to explain.